Okay, tak ada eh. Siapa tu yang tak mute tu? Alright. Okay. Um, so, um, uh, if you uh, start, uh, take a uh, system design, uh, there is one subtopic on the meta selection. Okay. In the meta selection, basically, you should uh, have a knowledge on all the mechanical properties of metals. Okay. So that you can make a decision when you select materials. Okay. Uh, the learning outcome of this lesson is uh, by the end of this course, you should be able to define engineering stress and strength. Okay. And giving an engineering stress and strength diagram, determine the mechanical properties of metals, and name the two most common hardness testing te technique. Okay. And uh, the differences between them. Okay. So many materials when in service are subjected to the forces and loads. Okay. Uh, if they doesn't experience any force and load, so it will just uh, naturally degraded by uh, interaction with the environment. But uh, if you uh, give a load on that structure, uh, you will um, allow that structure to uh, 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 change their, uh, uh, their, uh, 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 their dimension or whatsoever respond in response to the mechanical uh, uh, load uh, given to them. Right. Therefore, we must know the characteristic of the materials and to design the loaded member uh, using material that will not deform excessively and fail. So let's say you design a structure to support the loads. You need to know what is the materials that can uh, can uh, resist the failure or deformation. If it's deformed, means the structure will collapse. OK. Uh, the mechanical behavior of material is the relationship between its deformation to an applied load of force. That's the reason you need to know the stress strength curve, okay, on the tensile strength testing. All right, uh, let's say this is one structure. Uh, force is trying to compress these materials, okay, uh, this beam from the top. Okay, let's say you give a load and it's experience stress inside okay uh, this is in natural and this is in the stress form the intermolecular force are fundamental concepts that are used to describe how matter responds to the external force. Okay, the types of stress, they are normal uh, stress and shear stress, okay? And for the normal stress, okay, let's say you give a load at uh, this direction, uh, unit axial load, okay? Uh, internal force will develop to resist the applied force. Okay. So if you do the cross section. Uh, develop to resist its applied force. So we call it no. Okay. So what is stress? Stress. Uh, the equation of stress is stress equal to okay. So shear stress. Uh, let's say you give a stress at this direction. Shear stress is a strength is the as a dimension. Of a material, uh, doctor, putus -putus, eh? material based on the original dimension. Putus -putus. Uh. So, 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 
الثاني Maybe say off a camera lah. Yeah, off camera the. Yeah. Ah, uh, strain if a body. Okay, it's okay, girl. Okay. If a body is deformed, okay, and we measure the dimension of the deform deform a uh, body, for example, elongation, okay, it's a uh, geometry dependent. Uh, quantity. Okay, we want to get away from this. Okay, for for example, okay, let's say we have a, a length. Okay, uh, original length. If we extend the length, it's a measure of, uh, it's a measure of uh, strain. Okay, normal strain we have two. One is tensile strain, and another one is a uh, compressive strain. Okay, uh, still the same. Except uh, the sign negative showing that the decrease in the length, the direction of the load. Okay, shear strain uh, is a measure as the displacement of um, uh, of a surface that is a uh, direct contact with the applied shear um, from the original position. Okay, this is the value how we can measure the shear strain. Okay, equal to. Uh, 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 the, the deformation at this direction uh, following the strain direction divided by the original length. Okay, the strength of common engineering materials such as metal, ceramic, and polymer and composite uh, can only be determined by the experiment. Okay. So, uh, what is the experiment? Tesla test. Okay, Tesla test can be used to determine the elongation at break. In order to obtain information about the toughness of a materials, okay. So the setup is like this, okay. A sample with a standard a geometry, okay. You need to follow the standard of uh, uh, whatever British standard or American standard. So uh, this is a mass uh, uh, specimen uh, uh, size where um, you have a, a measure gauge here. Uh, what is the uh, length, original length, and over the uh, um, deformation during the uh, tensile test, you can measure the elongation before break. So this is a standard geometry. Uh, a testing machine is the use to stretch the specimen at a very slow constant rate until it fails. So this is the uh, universal tensile machine. All right, just now you have the, uh, uh, the uh, specimen. You put the specimen at this and grip at the end, and then uh, this part can be moved. Okay, this part uh, move at a specific load. Okay, uh, and then uh, uh, the reading is measure uh, the uh, deformation. Uh, the use in uh, uh, size, measures uh, stress and also the strain. Okay, the machine is designed to read the load required to maintain this uniform stretching. Okay, at a frequent interval during the test, data is recorded of the applied load. So uh, this is a moving part and uh, to uh, design a standard uh, uh, load uh, increment, the constant, increase constant. So the load uh, is uh, recorded here, you can convert it into uh, stress value because stress equal to uh, dot divided by uh, original cross sectional area. Okay, it's following the uh, standard uh, specimen uh, size. So we have one in our uh, strength laboratory, material science uh, laboratory in UTM. Right, uh, the change in uh, the length, which is uh, elongation, is, um, uh, is uh, the uh, the, um, what call it? the real time length or current length minus the original length. Okay, uh, this L naught is this one. Okay, for the standard, uh, for example, this standard uh, using L naught as 50. So uh, delta L is equal to um, uh, dot uh, 
uh, the length the uh, during the test length the minus this original uh, initial length. Okay. So a specimen can be measured uh, using a caliper manually, or you can use a sensiometer. Okay, this is an example of uh, recorded uh, video during the testing. So this is the machine. Okay, you. Uh, this is the uh, sample grid. Okay, you need to put your sample here. Session it will record the uh, indication value. Okay, different kind of materials. This is copper, aluminium, okay, stainless steel, This is stainless steel. You can see there are some necking, but uh, see necking means that uh, it can be uh, reduced in size. So meaning that compared to the other metals, okay, like this one, this is aluminium. The necking compared to the original uh, size uh, uh, is is not much different compared to uh, the stainless steel sample. Okay so much the decrease necking the reduction in sizes uh, is is uh, a is a uh, more compared to uh, the other sample so meaning that necking effect is more obvious and um it's reflect the properties what properties is that it's a ductility the softness so meaning that if you uh, stretch it it able to deform uh at a higher degree compared to aluminum. Okay. So it means that from this test, by looking at the behavior of fracture sample after testing, you can tell whether the material is soft or hard. Okay. Uh, and of course, by using the uh, Uh, by using the stress strain curve, you can definitely obtain the uh, quantitative value, okay, after the testing that corresponds to the stress and st uh, strain curve. Okay, in contrast to the force and lamination curve, a pure material parameter can be determined from the stress strain curve, which are no longer depending on the specimen geometry. Okay, so uh, this is force uh, versus uh, elongation. Okay, uh, if you look at this uh, force uh, versus uh, elongation, uh, uh, this is the explanation why we need to uh, stress strain curve. Uh, okay, look at the different size of specimen. Okay, for example, if you have a thick materials, you can see the uh, elongation is limited. Of course, if you have large, okay, uh, large and small uh, steel, okay, uh, uh, small uh, diameter steel is easily to deform. Okay, you can see that uh, the load to uh, change the uh, change uh, the uh, or deform it. Okay, change the shape is uh, lower, slower around twenty uh, kilonewton, and you can in fact elongate at the increment 
of uh, of the increment of the length by uh, 28 mm before felt. However, for the same materials, for, for example, the large one in the green color, okay, the same material, uh, you need to reach, okay, up until 70 kilonewton to make sure necking occur maximum and then it will fracture at the load 60 kilonewton and the elongation is only 40. However, if we determine by stress strength curve, the size is not um, uh, it's not matter anymore because we uh, we we use a stress divided by a lot divided by area. So whether it is large or small, it is uh, it's a, it will give a consistent uh, result. Okay. For example, this is a large, this is small, and uh, thin. I mean, a large diameter, a small diameter. It will give a same behavior because a lot divided by the area okay right um so this is the the equation to determine the stress okay not divided by area and uh, the normal strain is the elongation delta uh divided by original uh, length of the uh, l naught this is uh, the gauge uh, you will measure distance the elongation will occur between this uh, length so your measurement must be consistent from this point to this point okay so uh if we obtain the curve this is the information that basically uh we obtain for a method okay for example this is in the uh, elastic region okay uh, where you can see that the increment of stress is uh, linearly to the increment of the strain okay after that uh, you may see a, a bit constant in the load uh, with uh, the increase of uh, uh, elongation, okay? Uh, so uh, what happened is a yielding process. That's the reason we call this as a yield stress, okay? Materials start to yield it, okay? This location slip uh, will occur at this, uh, uh, at this point. So if you want to design a structure made of uh, metal, you have to make sure that the load okay will give a stress below the yielding stress below this otherwise your metal start to slip okay if you have a structure uh, a specific shape you give a lot beyond this limit so meaning that uh, plastic deformation will start to occur okay below this limit okay below this limit is an elastic deformation elastic region okay and for the increase in load, okay, what happened is strain hardening. That's the reason you see the curve is uh, uh, the, the, uh, the, the, the increase of load of, uh, over the over the over the uh, over the what we call it strain is uh, the rate is slower. Okay, uh, rate is slower if rate is higher means that the curve will be like this. Okay. So, and then uh, the elongation effortlessly after the necking process. So, meaning that the stress is reduced and the elongation is continuous. Okay. So, elastic behavior, yielding, strain hardening, necking. Okay. This is the main important, uh, 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 what we call it, information need to be uh, understand when we uh, do the testing and Analyze your material uh, properties, uh, make, um, material properties of your materials. Okay, a linear increase in which the strain increase in proportion to the applied stress. So it is elastic. Okay, if we look at the curve, okay, what happened? Uh, it is uh, if we give a load and we remove the load, it will reverse back to the. Uh, Atom original atomic position. Okay, for this kind of behavior, you don't have to worry about the permanent plastic deformation. Okay, the metal will deform, but if you release the load, it will go back to the original position. So your metal will not fail at this load. So because why? Because the elastic behavior, the atom bonding is still uh, strong and not 
broken because of this load. So make sure that the load applied is uh, producing uh, within the uh, elastic behavior. Okay. Yielding. What happened during the yielding? A slight increase in stress above the elastic limit will result in a breakdown of the materials and cause it to deform permanently. Okay, this is what happened during the yielding. Okay, we give a lot above the elastic uh, load. Okay, metal the slip will occur. So atom will move from the original uh, position and keep remove until the slip plane the slip plane also move. Then the stress at cause yielding is called yield stress. Okay, yield point. This is what we call plastic deformation. Okay, strength hardening after yielding, the stress must be increased again for a further elongation but become flatter until it reaches maximum uh, stress that referred to ultimate stress. Okay, at a point tensile strength. Okay, the cross section of the specimen decreases uniformly over the entire gauge length up to the highest point of the loading. Uniform plastic deformation will occur at this point. And necking, okay, after you reach the ultimate tensile stress, uh, uh, yeah, uh, ultimate stress or also ultimate tensile stress, the cross sectional area begins to decrease. Okay, in a localized region, and we you can see the neck means it's a necking process. Okay, construction of neck tend to form in this region as specimen elongate further. So like this, you can see it's a, a like a neck shape uh, at this uh, 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 specimen. Okay, this is failure. Specimen finally break at a fracture stress. Okay, so at the point. Where is it? Look at the. Okay. At this point, okay, this is fracture stress. So it will fracture at this stress value. After experiencing the uh, yielding process and passing the ultimate tensile strength and the value for fracture at lower, uh, lower than the ultimate test of strength. So necking will occur after uh, it's experienced uh, maximum stress and then it will fracture at a fra uh, the stress value lower than the ultimate test of strength. Okay, so this is necking. Okay, during necking, the specimen only elongate within the necking zone until it's finally break. Okay, so uh, uh, this is fracture sample. So basically, uh, what uh, we do is we look at the uh, shape of fractured surface. Okay, we can determine whether it is a uh, brittlely uh, uh, broken or uh, fractured or uh, ductly uh, fractured. Okay. So this diagram uses the actual cross-sectional uh, area and specimen length at the instant of the load is measured. We call it true stress. So meaning that if you increase the load. Uh, elongation occur, the reduction in in uh, diameter. Okay, so the 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 the, uh, the stress is measured by load divided at the actual cross sectional area. Of course, if you uh, allow the deformation during the necking, during the yeah, especially during the necking, necking you must understand that necking means it's reducing size. Okay, reduce in size, the diameter of the specimen at the measured gauge is reduced. So meaning that the load divided by area which already decreased. So meaning that what happened is, okay, so true strength is uh, uh, the, the, the length, actual length divided by uh, 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 the, the uh, uh, actual length means um, actual length that specific load divided by original length. So uh, still the same, okay? So what happened is, let me show this uh, code here.
Right. Look at this. Uh, true. Uh, true fracture. Uh, true fracture stress. Okay. This is a uh, uh, true stress versus uh, versus uh, strain. So true stress. If you divide the load divided by the actual uh, cross sectional area, so the cross sectional area will decrease, right? So what happens is stress value will increase. Okay, stress value will increase. And if you compare with the engineering stress, you will see this trend. Okay, you can see that uh, the necking okay, the here, this is ultimate stress, this is a fracture stress. Uh, okay, uh, they are different in terms of uh, the curve. So mostly in engineering um, application, we use engineering uh, stress instead of a true stress. Okay. So most engineering design is done so that the material supports the stress within the elastic range. Uh, true, um, the true strain up to the elastic limit will remain small enough so that the error in the using engineering value um, is uh, very small compared to the true value. So that time, what is that time? Okay. What is that time? Uh, any material that can be subjected to a large strain before it fracture, we call it that time. That time is soft. Okay, do not confuse with this word. That time means soft, meaning it's able to um, uh, to experience large strains, mean that you can increase the, uh, the, the, the length without break the specimen. So, Data materials are capable to absorb shock of energy. Okay, uh, the good thing if you have a uh, data, of course, data means basically if you have strong material, you keep increasing the strength, maybe you will reduce the ductility. If you want to have high strength, you need to tolerate the ductility. It will uh, remove. So if you if your applications require shock energy, Okay, maybe like uh, like um, hammering impact, impact load, or whatever the uh, involve the uh, shock uh, load. Ductility property is needed. Why? Because that time materials are capable of absorbing shock, uh, or or we call it absor uh, absorbing the energy, energy coming from impact load. Okay. So if they become overloaded, they will usually exhibit large deformation before failing. Okay, so imagine, okay, if you have a structure uh, that um, that um, brittle, okay, if you have a structure that is brittle, means you don't see a deformation. If you have a material that having a, a, a sufficient amount of ductility, it will show deformation, okay? If you see like, for example, uh, there are structure which uh, support the load, okay? Like a crane, crane structure, okay? Uh, you know the original shape and suddenly you see it's slightly bent, slightly bent, okay? The data banco. So what's happened? Meaning that it's experience overloading, okay? In, uh, 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 example, what happened if you choose a brittle material? You don't see the deformation. Suddenly, it's break. Okay, without any warning. Okay, because of the overloading. But if your material have a, a sufficient amount of ductility, you can see the deformation, and it's a good sign for you to uh, make a action. Whether you want to replace or you want to stop to use it, uh, you can uh, uh, replace the component that to ensure that the structure uh, or your mission work properly. Okay, so you can avoid the of uh, the accident, okay? So look at this, A, B, C, okay? A, B, C. Uh, can I ask you, which one show a huge deformation? The highest deformation? C. C. So that's mean which one is uh, the most ductile materials? B. Mm. B. So B, B is the most data. B or C? C, C. C. Okay, look at the necking. It reduces 
reduce reduce the mass at C. The size of neck is smaller at C. Meaning the original diameter is reduced so much at C materials. So C is the most soft material. The highest ductility material is C. Material C. Okay. So this is brittle, ductile, and C also ductile, but the most ductile is C. Okay. So ductile Y, uh, uh, B and C is ductile Y because it show a necking. Brittle, flat fracture. Okay. You can see that brittle structure is very flat. You don't see a, a, a cup and cone structure. Okay. Look at B. B is cup and cone structure. Okay. Cup and cone. So the top part is a cone. The bottom part is a, like a cup structure. Okay. So data is reported by uh, expressing the percentage of elongation or percent of surface area reduction at time of fracture. So uh, maximum uh, elongation okay, uh, during the fracture, then there's no recorded uh, strain value anymore or the elongation anymore. After fracture, they tak measure dah berapa pemanjangan yang berlaku. So that's the reason this maximum elongation is a uh, a value that they use for determine the ductility of the materials. Okay, or uh, uh, another uh, betul, uh, method is measuring the area of reduction during the fracture. Okay, this is the original length. Okay, mud steel has a typical value of 60%. Uh, brass, molybdenum, zinc may also exhibit ductile stress, strength of this is similar to the steel. Okay, in most metal, constant yielding will not occur beyond the uh, elastic region. So, okay, until uh, 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 some material, it doesn't really show this uh, region. What region? A uh, yielding region. Okay, you don't see this. So, it's very difficult for you to determine where is the yield strength. Okay, where is the yield strength? Okay, this is the limit where um, uh, you... Uh, basically set the uh, uh, applied loads, maximum applied load. Basically, we will set uh, depends on the safety factor. Okay, maybe we said if you want to use this structure made of this material, you know, okay, let's say the yield strength is, uh, yield stress is uh, 200 megapascal. So if you want to use this structure, the load must be two-thirds of this structure, of this uh, 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 maximum load value to avoid any yielding okay during the service okay okay stress and curve in most metal constant yielding will not occur beyond the elastic range in some materials the stress at which the metal material changes from elastic to plastic is not easily detected for example aluminum okay you don't see the flat region okay in this case offset method can be used to determine the offset yielding stress okay we have a method because uh, they established this method how just get a 20 percent offset okay 20 percent is 0 0.002 lah, uh, value of this strain okay so uh, 0 0.02 let's say uh, uh, and then uh, from uh, this point, the strain value at 0 0.002, uh, you construct a line parallel to elastic lines and uh, uh, but the, 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 uh, the stress at this uh, uh, intercept is a um, yielding uh, where the yielding will occur. Okay, first you define a point at 0.2% of the original gauge length. Okay, uh, original gauge length is a, is a constant value uh, because it's a standard. And then uh, second step is uh, draw a, a slope equal to the linear part. Okay, and the intercept uh, of this offset yield strength uh, of this line, offset line, 0.2% uh, 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 a line parallel to the elastic line is uh, the value of yield strength. 
or yield stress of the materials. Okay, yeah, this is a sample materials that doesn't show a yielding, obvious yielding uh, behavior. So just now we talk about um, uh, the tan materials. Now it is a uh, how the uh, fracture for the brittle materials. Okay, it's a, a flat cut. All right, you don't see a, an obvious reduction or necking at the point near to the fractured material. See, look at this. It's a similar with the uh, uh, the region far from the fracture. It doesn't show uh, an obvious changes in the in the uh, diameter, okay, there's no necking. Materials like this, we call it brittle materials, okay. If you increase the strength, okay, it will break without showing a necking behavior, okay. It will break at maximum uh, stress. Okay. Brittle materials such as uh, grey cast iron exhibit a much higher resistance to axial compression, okay, not in tension. So, um, the brittle inductor, okay, look at this uh, diagram. The red one is brittle, ductile is uh, uh, the blue one. Okay, let's say you don't know the properties of your materials. You conduct this test, okay and construct the stress strength curve from this behavior you can determine whether your materials is brittle or ductile if it is ductile how does it look like you can show a plastic deformation okay plastic deformation you can see there is uh, some increase in in uh, a little increase in the stress but much increase in the strength so this is a plastic deformation and for this one, it shows right after uh, uh, the end of the elastic uh, elastic uh, limits, it uh, immediately breaks. So the area under the curve is uh, reflected to the ability to absorb the energy. So we can say the area under the curve is equal to the absorbed energy, and this one is a data materials. Okay, what is Hooke's law? In the plastic elastic region, there is a linear relationship between stress and curve, uh, strength curve, and stress and strain. Okay. Um, okay, it's discovered by Robert Hooke and known as Hooke laws. Uh, so uh, the equation is, uh, yeah, the slope, the slope is that. So uh, uh, the slope is uh, uh, known as E, which is the, uh, uh, the rigidity or elastic. Okay, equal to the um, uh, stress divided by strength. Okay. So, modulus of elasticity is a mechanical property that is indicate the stiffness. Remember, okay, stiffness. So, higher, um, for example, like, okay. Modular obliquity is a mechanical property that uh, represents the stiffness of materials. Most grades of steel have modulus of elasticity about 200 gigapascal. Okay. Uh, the difference is uh, uh, fractured strength is different. Okay, fractured strength is different, uh, but the uh, the the what we call it the uh, stiffness is similar. Okay, whether you have a string, a spring steel, hard steel. Machine steel, whatever the steel, mostly the slope is similar. Okay. Uh, it can be used only if a material has linear elastic behavior. Beyond the uh, linearity limits, the relationship between stress and strain is no longer linear. The equation uh, is no longer valid. Lah. So, where is the this limit? This limit, if you look at the uh, previous uh, diagram. Okay, like this one, okay, this uh, brittle material has high modulus of elasticity. Okay, data material has lower modulus of elasticity. So, data material, this data material has uh, lower stiff stiffness compared to the brittle because you can see the slope is higher for brittle materials. Okay, so if you want to compare which one is high 
uh, E value. So look at the slope. Okay. So uh, to, to measure the slope, you have to look at the uh, this one. Okay. Uh, this is the limit. What limits? Okay. Uh, elastic limits. Uh, uh, proportional limits. So uh, at this point, this value is used to determine the young modulus. Okay, you need to use this value, not use the uh, yield strength. Okay. What else? Uh, this is your slow. Okay, resilience is a modulus of resilient. Resilience is the ability of material to absorb energy when it is deformed elastically. Okay, the modulus of uh, resilience is defined by the maximum energy that can be absorbed per unit volume without creating permanent distortion. So the area under the curve uh, at the elastic region. Okay, uh, just now, this one. Okay, this is uh, the, the uh, absorbed energy uh, for all region, including the plastic region. But the resilience is only focusing on the um, elastic region. Okay, elastic region. Right, so the equation is, uh, yeah, the area under the curve. Why, why is it half? Because it is a triangle, right? So, ni luas segitiga lah. Uh, half multiplied by strain at this point and stress at this point, PL, okay, the linear line, okay, not the yield point, okay. So the modulus of toughness is the amount of the strain energy per unit volume that a material can absorb just before it fractures. This is defined as toughness. Okay, so whether you have a high detility or low detility, uh, but if we talk about toughness, basically we look at the how uh, large the area under the curve, which reflect toughness of materials. Okay, so this is the equation how you can calculate the area under the curve. Okay, start from zero until the uh, strain at the fracture. Large area under the curve, High toughness. Okay, and this one area under the curve for brittle materials, low toughness. Remember, this red line usually represent the behavior of brittle materials. So, if you look at the area under these brittle materials, the area is smaller than the blue line. So, this brittle material basically having low toughness, brittle not tough okay but that time material have ability to absorb the energy when they are subjected to the uh, impact load okay so uh, you need to have a, a, a sufficient amount of ductility so that if the structure or design experience the function experience uh, impact load uh, so it can resist this kind of load Okay, again, this is the yield strength, ultimate strength, fracture strength. So what is the information that we can get? We can get the young modulus, the yield strength, okay, the strength, what is the strength that will uh, indicate the deformation occur? Basically, yield strength, and then uh, the strength hardening uh, behavior at this point, whether it is a uh, high uh, stress required for the strength hardening to have what is the ultimate strength, necking, how large uh, the, the uh, maximum strength will uh, uh, giving during the necking before fracture. This load shows the maximum load for fracture. And beside the ductility, you can have at the maximum uh, elongation before fracture, uh, during fracture, at the fracture point. Okay. The area under the curve, there are two. One is modulus of resilience, which is area under the elastic region, and the uh, uh, modulus of toughness area for all uh, area under the curve. 
Okay, this is a, a example of stress and strain curve. For a steel alloy, okay, steel alloy, um, okay, uh, so uh, can you calculate the uh, young modulus? What is the young modulus for this uh, stress and strain curve? Anyone? You say that the low out. Strength is dimensional, di dimensionless. So, um, for example, like this one, okay, you can take a point at 300 or 200, all right? Uh, look at the value for the strain, okay? For example, like here, uh, let's say you take a point 300, okay, it's still under elastic uh, value or 200, 200 divided by 0 0.0, oops, sorry, 0 0.001, okay? At uh, 200 megapascal and 0 0.001 strain value. So, what is the, the young modulus value? 200 gigapascal. Yes, 200 gigapascal. Senang je kan? Right, so 200 gigapascal. Uh, just now, I have shown uh, to you the value for the young modulus for the steel. It is about 200 gigapascal. So, that's correct. And what about the, um, the uh, yield strength? How to measure the yield strength? So the yield strength can be measured if you uh, draw a parallel line at uh, 0 0.002. Okay, for example, here, Okay, you have this line, right? Okay, this is the line. Okay, offset at 0 0.002. Okay, so the intercept here is the value for the yield stack. It is about 400 uh, megapascal. Okay. So now you can. Means if the stress strain curve doesn't show any um, uh, obvious yielding point, so you can determine by uh, taking the offset line at 0 0.002 strain and draw a line parallel to this uh, elastic line and the intercept between the curve and this offset line is the value for the uh, yield strain. So I think I have to stop here. We have about, um, uh, about um, 19 slides to go. Uh, we will continue our class on uh, Wednesday and if we are unable to finish this topic, we can continue during the tutorial class on uh, Thursday. Okay, so uh, any question before I end this uh, class? No, no, no. So more the slide, girl. Kalau belum slide, uh, saya bagi uh, seminit untuk you slide sebelum saya tutup. Okay, I think that's all. Uh, we can dismiss.